Hello, this is Pamela Smythe, Media Relations Manager at the University of Waterloo. I'm one of the hosts of Beyond the Bulletin, the podcast of internal communications at the university. We bring you news and views from the U Waterloo community. Please spread the word that we're on soundcloud.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And now the interview from episode 101 of Beyond the Bulletin. COVID-19 has been at the top of our minds for more than a year and a half now. During that time, we have seen a proliferation of false, misleading, and dangerous information circulate. We addressed facts about the vaccines in an earlier episode of Beyond the Bulletin. Now, School of Public Health Sciences Professor Zahid Butt, an expert on infectious diseases and global health, is going to bust some of the myths about the virus. Welcome back, Zahid. Thank you, Pamela. Thanks for having me. So the last time you were here, it was episode 48, and we spoke about social bubbles. Man, that feels like forever ago that that was top of mind. Um, So much more has happened since the idea of social bubbles was first introduced. Unfortunately, what hasn't changed is the spread of false information. Now, you're an expert in infectious diseases and global health. So thank you for being here to help us separate myth from fact or fact from myth. Uh, I'm going to ask you about some of the statements out there about COVID-19, and you'll help us get the record straight. How's that sound? Sure, uh, Pamela. Let's go ahead. All right. One of the statements out there is that children cannot get COVID-19. Is that true? No, that's not true. Uh, that's really false uh, information that's that's out there. Any uh, age group can get COVID-19, and person of any age can uh, contract the virus as well as spread the virus. We don't have a a vaccine yet for children that are under 12 years of age. There there are ongoing trials that are studying whether vaccines can be prepared for children under 12. Once we have that, then we may be able to get those children who are under the age of 12 vaccinated. Do we have any numbers on children contracting? Are they particularly vulnerable? Not so we are seeing an um, increase in the number of cases, uh, you know, pediatric cases, which means children, cases among children in the United States, as well as recently in Alberta. So you can see from the, from the cases that no, no age is uh, protected against the virus. We are also seeing outbreaks in school settings, and we are also seeing um, outbreaks in workplaces or in other estab- establishments where uh, where there are younger people. So as a, as a virus, it doesn't spare any age. What about uh, if you get COVID? Can you get it again? You can get reinfected uh, with the virus, uh, even if you have had the virus before. There are studies looking at that. There are studies trying to estimate the reinfection rate among people who had the virus before. So you, you would get some natural immunity but we, we, we are not sure how long that immunity lasts and how strong that immunity is. There is very limited research uh, ongoing uh, looking at uh, natural immunity against the virus. You have to realize that there is a difference between the alpha and the delta variant because of some mutations. And it's quite likely that uh, being infected with the alpha variant will not protect you against the delta variant or or that the level of immunity that you get get against alpha variant will not be the same that you get against the delta variant or that the getting and recovering from the delta variant won't necessarily protect you from getting the delta variant again yes you mentioned natural immunity first off what is natural immunity so this is the immunity that you get when you are infected with any of the infectious diseases for example, you can get uh, natural uh, immunity from uh, from the flu virus. You can you can get uh, natural immunity from some other infectious diseases. So this is the immunity that the body develops after getting infected with um, any infectious uh, disease. That's what it means. Some say contracting the disease provides better immunity than vaccines. What do you think about that? There has been uh, very limited uh, research trying to look at uh, natural immunity, especially in the context of COVID-19 and uh, and the COVID-19 and the COVID-19 vaccine. So we are not really sure how much uh, immunity that we get when you get infected with the virus. Uh, but we do know about 
the immunity that you get with the vaccines. We know that uh, some of the vaccines, uh, they give you around 90% uh, kind of, you can say, efficacy against the virus. Um, mm -hmm. But we are not really sure how much immunity do you get uh, when you get the virus naturally, that is like through just infection mm -hmm. without vaccination, and also how long that immunity lasts. So there have been uh, very few studies uh, documenting this. So I would not recommend anyone from getting the virus deliberately, and I would always educate, uh, educate that you, you get vaccinated against the virus. One of the other statements here is if you don't have COVID symptoms, you can't give somebody COVID. No, that's not true. Uh, a lot of uh, infections, particularly in children, are asymptomatic infections, which means that they will not show the sy symptoms, but they can uh, spread the virus to others. Oh, wow. Particularly in children. And they're not vaccinated. Yes. So that's why we need to uh, really ramp up our vaccination rate among among the eligible population. That means people uh, who are 12 years of age and older. And also we need to be working towards getting a vaccine for children under 12 years of age. Okay, let's talk a bit about a treatment that we've heard out there because a very popular podcaster named Joe Rogan has announced that he has COVID and he's treating himself with ivermectin. What do you say to that? From what we have seen and uh, and looking at the evidence and research, the, the treatment does not work for COVID-19. Uh, it should not be used uh, for the treatment of COVID-19. You could say it's a deworming uh, medication that is used in humans and animals. It is not recommended. So please don't use this, uh, this as a treatment for COVID-19. Deworming medication for a respiratory illness. Yes, so so that is one thing. It's it's only meant to uh, basically take out worms from your body. It's not meant to cure your body of the virus. And it's mostly used in livestock, right? Yes, so uh, it's used in humans as well, but it's mostly used in livestock and animals. And and the dose of this uh, ivermectin is is higher for. Uh, uh, for animals, which means that if you take that pill that is intended for animals, you would get more side effects, basically, than you would if you were, uh, were taking that medication intended for humans. Well, on that, uh, another statement we've heard is the adverse effects from the vaccine are worse than the effects of COVID. This is also um, misinformation because what you're seeing in most cases with vaccines is you get injection pain, you might feel a bit fatigued, you might develop a fever, but your symptoms are far less and less severe than you would get if you get infection from COVID-19 if you're if you're not uh, if you're not vaccinated. So the vaccines are very good at preventing severe disease and also uh, preventing death. So we have seen that those who are uh, vaccinated. Uh, they have uh, less symptoms. They also don't end up in the hospital as, as frequently as those who are unvaccinated. And uh, a recent paper today in uh, Lancet Infectious Disease is also uh, talking about the fact that if, for example, if you get infection after being fully vaccinated, it still reduces uh, your symptoms and it reduces the incidence of uh, long COVID by half. People could have a case of, of COVID-19 and it seems fairly mild, milder than they were expecting maybe, but they could be susceptible to long COVID, correct? Yes. So uh, people, so that's another thing which is, uh, which people have to be cautious uh, about talk, thinking about natural immunity against COVID-19. So, you might have milder uh, sim symptoms initially when you 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 have that uh, natural COVID-19 infection, but you might have this long COVID, which is a serious consequence of uh, of COVID-19. And you, we have seen cases that have really debilitating, um, you know, symptoms after having COVID-19, and they are classified under this long uh, long COVID. What exactly is long COVID? you have these uh, protracted symptoms. So, for example, you would be feeling uh, a lot of fatigue uh, that's, that's continuing for 
you know a long longer period of time for example not just like three days uh, it, you might have uh, shortness of breath you might have uh, uh, cognitive dysfunction which is uh, with some people they call it brain fog and so these are the three most common symptoms and you know in some people you know they have these protracted depression uh, you might have a fever you might have chest pain and and for some these loss of smell and taste continues for far longer than what we have seen in people who don't have long covid it can last uh, 3 months and there are few cases that have gone from like uh, six months and uh, and even like nine months. COVID hasn't really been for long enough for them to actually know yeah. how long long COVID is. I mean, is it potentially lasting years? It could, uh, but I think the good thing is that people are getting vaccinated. So vaccinated is, is, is very important that you get vaccinated. Yes, vaccinated people can, in fact, get COVID-19. Those are called breakthrough infections, is that right? Yes. So breakthrough infections are are classified as as infections that occur after you are fully vaccinated. And by fully vaccinated, I mean that you are 14 days after your second dose, in case you are using a vaccine that has two doses, or 14 days after uh, after a single dose uh, uh, of a vaccine that's uh, that's only intended to give you one uh, one dose. So if you get infected with COVID-19 after that, uh, that, is, that, is, that is known as breakthrough cases or breakthrough infection. Why does it happen? So with all vaccines, uh, the efficacy is not 100%, which means that there, there would be definitely some cases that, uh, that don't develop that level of immunity to protect against the virus. So the vaccine... Uh, will protect you against uh, severe disease uh, and death. And w- when you get the, uh, even if you get infected with the virus, it will either be uh, no symptoms or would be generally milder symptoms. Because one of the statements that we've heard is that vaccinated people are as likely to get sick from COVID-19 as unvaccinated people and perhaps even more sick. That's not true. Vaccinated people definitely show less symptoms or milder symptoms than people who are unvaccinated. Well, Zahid, thank you so much for coming back and for clearing up some of this misinformation. Thank you, Pamela. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I'm happy that I could contribute to to providing the correct information about uh, COVID-19. Well, we're lucky to have somebody with your expertise at Waterloo. Thank you for listening to this interview from the Beyond the Bulletin podcast from the University of Waterloo. To listen to all of episode 101 or indeed any others, look for Beyond the Bulletin podcast on soundcloud.com. Please join Brandon Sweet and me for new episodes on Fridays. And don't forget to tell your Waterloo connections about us. Until next time, thanks for going Beyond the Bulletin.